for Southampton. The news that Hugh Fisher has a groin injury. And like the good pro he is, he told the manager that he wasn't fully fit. So the number seven shirt goes to Paul Gilchrist. Rodrigues, McCallioch and Osgood all aware of what cup football at this level means. They've been through it before. As for the Crystal Palace side, as you've seen, Peter Wall is fit to play in the back four. But Martin Hinshelwood is missing from the sixth round side. He's had a cartilage operation. Jeff Johnson is eight in a team that has brought a lot of colour to this cup competition this season. Pat Partridge and Bishop Auckland is the referee. And now the 52,000 crowd waits for the off. So Peter Taylor at Crystal Palace gives this semi-final the first touch. Palace attacking the goal to our right. Of course, in that white chain strip of theirs, allowing uh, Southampton to play in their normal strip of red and white stripes and black shorts. Wembley could be 90 minutes away of the most stress-filled afternoons that most footballers will experience when it's so near, and yet it could be so far. Palace striving to become the first third division side to get to an FA Cup final. Guided there by their manager, Malcolm Allison, of course. And Hammond just getting that ball. A puff of his cheeks. Peter Osgood is the number nine between Holmes and Holder. They're both on their feet again, though. As McCallion now tries to find Osgood. A great chance here for Southampton. Oh, and Hammond did so well to close so tightly on Osgood. And Osgood, you can see from his face, he knew how close he was to that vital opening goal as that long pass from the left found him and it seemed for a moment that the goal was there for him until Hammond came and blocked it. Jeff Johnson. They're tending to lose the ball a little too often for their own comfort, Palace, at the moment as Osgood now tries to feed Shannon. Beautifully stopped, though, by Jim Cannon. Here's Holder. Played for Taylor. Nice ball there by Taylor for Johnson. Now for Swindlehurst. Whittles in the middle. Chaladon's come up fast as well. Taylor. Little chipped in there towards Whittle. Oh! Looked as though he was bought there by Rodrigues, and it was almost a replica of the way he killed the ball and whacked it into the back of the Sunderland net in the last round. Nice little cross by Taylor. And Whittle, perhaps just a little unlucky there. Hit well, a nicely driven free kick there towards Osgood, and here's Nick Holmes. Curled in again, Wall getting that one away to Peter Taylor. Peach was right with him. Now McCallion. Really strong, firm challenge there. And the Palace players claiming there, and again we've got a flare up, claiming that McCallion went over the top there to Holder. And the referee pulling Jim McCallion away with that fresh growth of beard. A man who really has had a big influence on Southampton and played well in the middle of the field, and Mike Shannon having a word as well. But the name of McCallion will clearly have to go into the referee's book. Giving his name, Pat Partridge, obviously feeling that he's got to deal severely with that challenge. By Jim McCallion on Phil Holder. Southampton now get us underway. Mike Shannon on the far side, a nondescript first half. Let's hope for something a little more lively in the second. Shannon now trying to get his men away and trying to get Stokes away. This might be interesting. Stop there. Stokes again with a shot, had it charged down. And uh, Nick Holmes giving a quite easy and simple catch there for Paul Hammond. Area. Holmes coming up to reinforce them. Even Jim Steele making a move from the back as McCallion now takes this corner for Southampton. Osgood with a header just over the top. That look of determination on the face of Peter Osgood as McCallion floated that corner in. And yet again, Southampton got a free header in the Crystal Palace penalty area. This time Osgood, but he was too high. Hammond doing his exercises at the other end. Palace already with the corner taken, and it's with Peter Taylor. Peach desperately trying to get back there. Oh, and Evans almost got in there. Turner was really struggling as that ball came across. Not away yet. Jeffries. Johnson. Cannon. Chance for the cross. Not a good one. And Blythe there 
to steer it away to Rodrigues for Southampton. And back to Paul Hammond. While at the other end, Ian Turner must be considering that long floating cross that always had him in trouble and very nearly gave Ian Evans a chance to nod it in. Southampton at the moment looking a better all-round team but only just oh oh and there's some skirmishing going on again there and Osgood again is in the middle of it and he really is giving the referee something there and he can't get away with that so Osgood Paul to referee Pat Partridge And the second Southampton name goes into the book. But can they do something from one of their famous set pieces? Taylor and Holder are the men. Holder making the signal. Taylor with the kick. Floated in there towards Swindlehurst. Oh, and he had a great chance there. That should have counted. Taylor curling that free kick in. And Swindlehurst losing his shadow. Really only just glancing the ball. A goal kick. Interesting if the whole thing hinges on this as Taylor takes the corner, floated in there towards Evans. My goodness, that couldn't have been closer. Dan Taylor with those curling free kicks. Again, Ian Evans, who's done so much in defence, getting up. And just glancing it wide. Rodriguez. Cannon. Jim McCallion takes this throw for Southampton. With just over a quarter of an hour to go. Shannon nodding it back for Gilchrist. Osgood. Gilchrist. Hit well. Goal! might be tempted to pull one or two back now they probably will only play with Shannon and Stokes up well there's nobody happier in this pack Stamford Bridge today than Paul Gilchrist so a free kick to Southampton which David Peach will take Good free kick too. A little too high though for Osgood and for Evans. And uh, Hugh Fisher, there he is. 12 minutes to go, he says. And he, I would have thought, showed a great professional that he is. Said, I'm not fit to play. And so he did himself out of a place in the semi-final. And indeed, his replacement has scored that vital opening goal. Here's Bobby Stokes now. Turned in low and again. Evans seemed a little low getting uh, to that one took a knock on the fingers for his pains and really had to get down quickly and in the end he just about got there Evans Wall begging for it Shannon on the break down he goes and I think it's a penalty is it? Penalty given. Or not. No, it's not. Thought for a moment he was running to that penalty spot. But the linesman has come quickly onto the field to show them that it was just outside. No, he's given a penalty. 
He's given the penalty. So, David Peach will take this penalty. And this really is the moment where he could settle everything now for Southampton. Peach versus Hammond. 2-0! Oh, tremendous scenes of jubilation there from Southampton as David Peach I would have thought now puts Wembley beyond the dreams of Crystal Palace Ian Turner a shake of the hands with his fellow defender, Mel Blythe. A penalty that he hit fairly straight, but he hit with such power into the back of the net. Frizz along with Ian Evans. Here's Johnson. Now with Swindlehurst. Peter Taylor waiting in the middle. And it might come through to Chatterton. No. Evans coming up. And Palace know they've got to spring everybody forward now. They've got to take the most enormous risks to the back in the hope of pulling something out of the bag at the other end of the field. Jim Clooney on the left, on the coaching staff, Laurie McManamy, knows that there are about eight minutes left. And I think even Terry Venables, fighter though he is, knows that it's going to take a tremendous overturn now to... Uh, Pull this one round. Long ball. Shannon streaking after it. And this time he's got the beating of Evans. Is this the one for Shannon? Oh, and what a miss. Down he goes on his knees. Perhaps knowing that it may not be absolutely vital with just four minutes to go. But Shannon put through there, had time to consider everything, and put it wide of Hammond and wide of that far post. But this semi final is almost theirs. Swindlehurst running it down for Mickey Chatterton. It might come through there for Holder. It might still come through again. And in fact, it was turned back by Jim Steele. Then this afternoon. And that feeling was right bang on the target. Certainly Crystal Palace, it's got to be said, have brought a romance and excitement again to the FA Cup this season. But their day looks to be done now, as the referee again looks at his watch. And it's all over, and Southampton are through to Wembley, with goals by Paul Gilchrist, the man who only came on at the last moment, and David Peach from the penalty spot. Well, there are smiles everywhere. Ian Turner, the goalkeeper's broadest of all. The fans have had a tremendous day up here from the south coast. Southampton are through to the final. And as Palace go trooping off, he's going right down. In fact, all the Southampton players have gone down there to salute the Southampton supporters. And it's hard to know who's the more delighted, the players or the fans, or Peter Osgood, who's helped to put Southampton through to the final on this, his old ground at Stamford Bridge.